in our lead up to the opening of Long Christmas Ride Home, I thought it would be cool to show you some of the steps that went into the making of the masks for Long Christmas Ride Home. So today I'm going to show you how I molded the masks using Warbla. This was one of the first times that I tried recording my voice and the image at the same time. And so you'll notice a lot of camera issues, but this was me fooling around and learning how to do this for other projects in the future. So I hope you enjoy. I'm going to talk about making the practice rehearsal masks for Long Christmas Ride Home. So I'm making them all off the same face, which is this one. Um, and this is a plaster cast of a student that we had from many years ago. Um, and it's nice because this person had a, a fairly full face, so I feel like this face shape is going to fit most people. Uh, it's the same face we used for Much Ado About Nothing to make the butterfly masks, so that's kind of cool. Um, the thing that I learned after doing the butterfly masks is Warbla is significantly stickier than I remembered when you're doing this quantity of masks. Um, so I decided to try covering the face with aluminum foil, which has been working really, really well. Um, and I'm making this kind of a shape as the base face. Um, so I'm going to get started. So I have it covered in aluminum foil and any of the little puncture spots that I did, I covered up with masking tape because that'll be easy to get rid of. So I'm using my craft shears because um, they have that space inside um, to account for the kerf of cutting a thick material. And then I'm just doing the lower half of the face. So I'm only measuring the amount of material I need to stretch over that area. So then I've got my heat gun. And I'm always really confident to point my heat gun away from stuff that might catch on fire. This is unlikely, but you never know. So the cool part is I can see like when I'm heat gunning and my warbler is starting to be really, really floppy. I know that it's almost ready. And then the obvious thing that I'm going to say is that if, if you've been hitting it with a heat gun, it's really, really hot, <laughs> but it's, it's not so hot that you can't touch it. So, but yeah, no, you just want to remember. Okay. So then I'm going to pull it to stretch it over the face. And then I'm using my fingers really delicately, but you know, with intention to get the warbler to sit in the face and paying attention to really, you know, squishing it in around the nostrils because all of this shaping gives you an indication of where to build up the face. Once we go in for adding stuff, making, making the characters be characters when we add the paper mache, which is what we'll be doing to make the real thing. Right now, these are just rehearsal masks, but you know, all practice is good practice. Okay, so then once I have it shaped around the face, I'm just gonna heat gun to get it to conform a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to do the chin portion because we need some of down here. So I'm just going to look at how much material I need to make that happen easily. And add a little bit of a curve to the top. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to kind of attach it and pull it over the curve. And then 
The next, the really important thing is to blend all of your lines. Um, because some of like that harshness will read through the paper mache if you're not careful. Uh, but Warblood does stick to itself. So you can blend it out really easily. I put it on the one setting versus the two so it doesn't get quite so hot. And you want to be careful. If you see the Warblood starting to bubble, you want to stop there because you don't want to destroy its integrity. But then um, you can really just like smush it down and blend that away. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to do a second layer because the two layers, when they mold together, really help it help the, the two materials stay in that curved shape and they never want to bend back away from each other. If you leave it just one layer, when you get hot again, when you get it hot again, um, you can you can get it pretty much all the way flat, um, which is not what you want for a reversal item. <laughs> Um, or something that's going to go on stage. You really want it to be able to last a lot longer. Body heat included. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm just going to stretch this over. That's so creepy. Um, so some people really like sculpting tools in this moment. Um, if you do choose to do that, I highly recommend picking metal ones because the wood tools will stick to the warbler. Uh, which is like another good note because if you're making props and you want to add warbler to wood, you can heat it, enough, uh, heat it up enough to get them to stick pretty permanently. That's looking pretty great. Okay, so then placing this really nicely.
the other really great thing about Warbla is that was really fast. So this is two layers, and that's all we need for the rehearsal masks. So the important thing about it is I want to leave this until it's all the way cooled, or we can deform the Warbla when we pull it off the face. So I'm going to leave this over here and pull out one that I did yesterday to show you the next step. So this one is already pulled. I pulled off the aluminum foil with the face, and then I pulled the aluminum foil out of the face. Um, so then I'm going to use my original face to draw the mask shape onto there. Um, the way that I picked this mask shape was I put um, one of the cloth masks that we're going to use as the fabric under mask on there and I just made sure that the outer warbla mask was going to cover all of the cloth mask except for the under chin um, and that's really so that you can breathe. <laughs> kind of important. Let's see, I had, I had a Sharpie. Oh yes, it's right there. So I'm going to shove this in. And I'm just using this ruler to finish marking out my lines. Um, I think it's important at this point to double check that everything's symmetrical before you start cutting. Because while we can add more warbla, like having these two layers the way they are is probably the nicest they're ever going to be. So it'd be great to nail it on the first try. That side's two and a half. That side's two and a half. Okay. So then again, I'm using my craft shears. Can we so see the lines before you cut? Oh, yeah. So you can see them. Okay. Then I'm going to cut it up. So this is where that gap between the scissors comes in handy? Yeah, it's really important. The one's like this gap. The one that's so really annoying with fabric is really useful. <laughs> yep. I know. Funny how that is. So because you drew that line in Sharpie, where are you cutting in regards on the inside, on the outside of the Sharpie line? I am aiming to cut right down the middle okay. of that Sharpie line. Cool. And I'm just going to curve the corners. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to show you, let's see if you can see kind of what happened. See how this part is a little bit whiter? Um, it means that in the cutting process, the little fibers in there got a little smushed. We can fix that with a little bit of heat. 
and that'll make those edges happy again. On one again? Mm -hmm. On the one sheet, the lower sheet? Thing. Yeah. And then by doing this, I'm also able to make sure that all the edges are stuck together so that the two layers are really well sandwiched. And then if you have a harsh edge anywhere, you can kind of just mold it with your fingers rather than trying to cut it again with the scissors. Okay, so that looks like a thing. So the next step is to put in the holes for the elastic on the side. So I'm going to do a quick cleanup and then show that. Okay, piece of wood. Um, I am choosing, not only is it good for camera angle, but I'm going to be hitting my um, piece right over this leg because that's the hardest part of my table is where it has that direct support to the floor. Um, so that's going to give you the best advantage for cutting. And then I have this set of um, belt notch cutters, which is great, because they have this kind of um, oblong but rounded shape. And um, Whenever you put holes in stuff that you're going to then apply tension to, you always want your edges to be rounded so that it doesn't generate cracks in the thing that you just made. So I'll start with this guy. I'm just going to place it on the edge. Um, I am cutting my holes just over a quarter of an inch away from the edges, and I'm using the nylon side of my mallet. That's really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the fun part about live videos. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, all right, this isn't working. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to pound this using my nylon side. There we go. That's nice. Because I, I just want that nice, clean hole. Um, and you can see it got a little lighter around it again, but I can just hit that with a heat gun and it'll all heal itself, which is really nice. Is it? Would it be less of a problem if you cleaned it out every mask or something? Oh, maybe. Maybe I should clean it out just like every time. Rather than letting six get jammed in there. Yeah. So that's what it should sound like. Bang, bang, bang. Perfect. I think that's the other answer. side. Hmm? So I think that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. One layer. Oh, it's that it's. That's what I'm not accounting for. So I've done this in the past, it's been a single layer. Oh, 
Can we okay. see the after healing? Close up. No white. Yeah, that looks really nice. This whole thing. Very happy. Okay. So. <sighs> Pulling this guy off. Okay. So this one, I uh, put masking tape on the sides to make sure that it was easy to pull off. So if I loosen the masking tape, it's holding the aluminum foil down. Then the whole thing just kind of pops off, which makes it a lot easier. Because then I can just kind of release it like that. Easy peasy. Okay, and then and then I have a mask on Wish for a Beat. So then the next step is to sew on elastics and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them on by hand here and because these are rehearsal masks I'm going to leave safety pins in them and this is going to let the actors choose how tight they want to be in them. Um, the other step that I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue a little bit of foam into the bottom and that allows the mask to stay away from the person's face just enough so that their air can escape out the bottom and it lets them still breathe, which is really important. So <laughs> that's how we're making the rehearsal masks for Long Christmas Ride Home. And join me next time when I'm going live.